the two administrations work together. Ultimately, at the end of the day, 30 to 40 million people are going to get better access to medications. And we did get news uh, in the White House press briefing a couple weeks ago that the cost of the cash pay, which is what we're talking about here, is going to go down to $250 over the next two years for, for Zetbound and Wegovy. Those are those. That's all tremendous news. So I realize I uh, that was a bit tangential. Uh, so I apologize for that. But it's huge. It's absolutely huge, huge news that the government did something that's actually helping millions and millions of people, and especially the most vulnerable in our population. But let's let's talk about uh, not politics because I know that that irritates people. Uh, but it's you can't talk about what's going on without talking about it. It it's it's the reason that we have this news to begin with. So, so on the topic of why this is all a miracle, because there is this avalanche of good data. There is this avalanche of cascade of information about GLP ones that are showing they just help people live longer. Forget about the diabetes, forget about the obesity, forget about, you know, whatever they're helping people live longer. And so this news story I think is massive. It's a GL. It shows that GLP ones are actually linked to dramatically lower colon cancer mortality. So if you know or love anybody who's ever struggled with colon cancer, ever fought and battled colon cancer, listen to this data because this is astounding. Uh, this is from the U from UC of San Diego. It was a study that showed that more uh, that followed more than six thousand and eight hundred colon cancer patients. Y'all with me? Six thousand and eight hundred patients with colon cancer. GLP-1 users had 15.5% mortality at five years versus 37.1% mortality for non-GLP-1 users. So the folks five years out from having colon cancers that colon cancer that were on a GLP-1 had a 15.5% mortality rate and the people who didn't get it had a 37% point one percent mortality rate that's massive that's massive uh twice over twice as as better outcomes for patients on glp1 now listen to this even after controlling for bmi the severity of the disease and age and other sort of confounding health factors glp1 users still had significantly higher survival rates My, my, my mind is blown every day by the news that comes out about these drugs and they're getting cheaper. Like, is that clocking? <laughs> is that clocking with you? These drugs are showing that people live longer and they're getting cheaper. Like, when do we have positive news like that? When do we have anything positive that's going on in the broader discussion of health, of politics, of life in general, where we can go... We're getting a deluge of information about something that helps people live longer. Every day we're getting more information and they're getting cheaper. I just, my mind's blown. I guess it's the eternal optimist in me. It just doesn't happen and it's happening now. And what an amazing time to be at the forefront of this, right? What an amazing time to be a member of the OTP community. So the strongest benefit uh, appeared to be in people with a BMI over 35, that's, you know, pretty severe obesity, but it's also a super stigmatized group of people in cancer care, right? Because you go to the doctor with a sore throat and what does he tell you? You need to lose some weight. Now extrapolate that out to cancers when people go, you know, if you would have just eaten less and moved more, probably wouldn't be in this situation. It's a highly stigmatized group and they receive the strongest benefit in terms of uh, geo outcomes uh, with colon cancer if they were on a GLP-1. So researchers are pointing to some of the anti-inflammatory properties and metabolic effects of these drugs. But as we know, one of the things we know about cancer is it eats sugar. It eats sugar. That's why uh, on those uh, those uh, PET scans, CT, so those PET CT scans, is it, uh, that they use to kind of see if you've got cancer tumors because they light up because they're eating a bunch of glucose, right? Um, and essentially... Uh, we know that cancer cells eat glucose and these drugs help to, to regulate um, the, the amount of glucose in your blood. And so some of the metabolic effects, the anti-inflammatory properties, and as well as early lab data showing that GLP drugs may slow tumor growth, may all be contributing factors. And the researchers, of course, of this clinical trial are saying, we have got to step up uh, studies and clinical trials that test whether GLP-1 medications uh, can improve all cancer survival rates. Wow. 
I mean, my mind is blown. My mind is just continuing uh, to be blown every day uh, at what these medications are doing for sick people. Um, and, and that's why I get so fired up um, about the accessibility to these medications because it's helping people live longer, better. They're getting their lives back. And that's why so many people, you know, so many people are like, you're going to be on that shot for life. It's like, yeah, yeah, I am. Cause it's helping me live longer. Right. <laughs> I mean, from my cold dead hands, I mean, that's really the rallying cry of this community in terms of, of whether um, they're going to allow something to take, a, take these medications away uh, from them. So these medications are changing lives. They've changed my life um, along with lifestyle modifications and things that I've changed. They're one of the greatest contributing factors uh, to the current state of my health, which is uh, about as good as it's been in 10 years, uh, my weight particularly. Uh, but one of the other huge contributing factors to my current state of health is my partnership with this company called Shapa. Shapa has a numberless scale and the numberless scale has been a massive game changer for me. Bear with me here because when I explain this to people, like, why would you have a scale without numbers? Well, first of all, for me, when I step on the scale and it's up five pounds on an intellectual level, I know, I know I didn't gain five pounds of fat last night, but on an emotional level, it destroys me. And I won't step on that scale again for a week, two weeks, a month, three months, sometimes four or five months, I won't step back on the scale. But the reality of the ritual of stepping on the scale is it causes me to be more engaged on a day-to-day -day basis with my health. If I stepped on the scale in the morning, I'm more cognizant of what I eat, when I eat, how much I eat, how much I move, when I move, if I move. All of that stuff matters more to me if I stepped on the scale in the morning. But if I step on a number scale, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. It messes with my emotions too much. The numberless scale zooms out, gives you 10 days of data. 10 days of data instead of just this day-to-day -day fluctuation. And it allows me to stay engaged with the scale. And when I'm engaged with the scale, I'm engaged with my health. I think it could do the same for some of you if you're screwed up up here like I am with the numbered scale. You can learn more about it by going to home.myshapa.com forward slash OTP. Code OTP30 is going to save you 30%. It's one of the greatest tools that I have found on this journey. And I hope that you can find it and discover it for yourself. That's what we got for the podcast today. I'm super thankful for each and every one of you for being here today. Um, really would encourage you to hit the thumbs up button. Uh, I will take, if you have any questions, now is a great time to drop them in the comments while I'm wrapping up uh, the discussion here.